Hello, here we are, 2017 Oxford Pat. We've now got 23 questions. Looks like they're all in one block. So this seems to be a change from the previous years. Still no calculators. So I'm just gonna have to divide these up as I can. What have we got? Multiple choice stuff. Answers should be given exactly and in simplest terms unless indicated otherwise. Right, so there's a few little tweaks, but we're still not using calculators. So that's the main thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, so we've immediately got a different feel at the start of this. So let's differentiate this with respect to X. So we're going to be doing product rule on this. So Y dash is going to be, so we'll leave the 2X and differentiate the other one, which gives us minus 2X sine X, and then leave the cos X and differentiate that. So 2 cos X. So what is that? which does that match up to it's got to be d is the same yep d is the same so that was good which equation has the same solutions as all of that so well let's factorize it and see what we're looking at so we've got two lots of x squared minus x minus six equals zero and then well we can factorize that again so we've got two what's that gonna be x minus three x plus two equals zero so solutions are going to be three and minus two yep oh that's the same as eight they've just taken the two off right evaluate the following sum so right so what have we got here then let's write some of this out this is going to be equal to so when n is zero we're going to get well, we're going to get one because it's something to the power of zero then for n is one we're getting minus one over e for n is two we're going to get plus one over e squared okay and then we're going to get yeah we're going to get minus one over e cubed yeah okay so we can see what's going on here that's going to go up to 10 so up to one over e at a 10 so we've got that a is equal to one we got r is equal to minus one over e and we've got 11 terms all in all so we want to do sum to n which is a one minus r to the n over one minus r so we've got a is one so that's good to ignore so we've got one minus minus 1 over e to the 11 is that right yes divided by 1 minus 1 over e so 1 plus 1 over e now they've put them all in uh yeah they haven't done one over so they've done negative powers so anyway what we got on this so that minus sign is going to stay there and become a plus then when we do that to 11 so we're going to have 1 plus e to the minus 11 which means we're going to want this to be e over, yeah, 1 plus e to the minus 1, which gives us e. Okay, that was a bit more complicated than the previous two, but still not that bad. Question four. So we've got all of that. a and b are both real and positive. a is not equal to b. So what is x? Right, so... What have we got with all of this? And so we'll just divide through. So if we divide by b to the 3x, so we'll have b to the 2x. And then we can take these ones off. So we're subtracting the power, really, from the other side. So that's going to be a x minus minus x. That gives us 2x. And then we've got 5 minus 3 is 2. OK, so we can get rid of... I suppose we could get rid of those twos, but let's just do, what are the answers all in? Oh, they've just logged everything. So we can do 2x log b equals 2x plus 2 log a. So we just need to rearrange all of this. So we're going to have a, we're getting x on its own. We're going to have a 2 log a on this side and then we're going to have what we're going to have on this 2x so a log b minus log a and then a 2 don't know why i didn't cancel these twos long ago but there you go get rid of those twos and we could have done it at this stage we could have got rid of the twos at that point 
the does this look anything like what we've done here? Oh wow, it's D. Right, that's good. So yeah, just sort of groping around in the dark until something looks like the answer. But yeah, you have to use these answers to some extent to see what sort of format they're looking for, knowing that we can just do those logs and leave log B and log A sitting around all over the place. Which of the following integrals are equal to zero? And it could be multiple ones. So, oh, well, we know that this one is definitely because we've got that going on. So it's symmetrical. So that's just going to cancel out if we're integrating between each side. That is going to be the same as that, but negative. So definitely on that one e to the minus x squared from minus infinity to infinity. Well, that can't be because e to the minus x squared is always positive. So we can't have that. Then what have we got? Minus pi to pi x sine x. Right, how is that going to look? All right, so if we've got positive x, yeah, if we go in, let's think about this. I'm going to draw my... So pi is doing, uh, sine is doing that from minus pi to pi. So we've got positive here for positive x, so that would be positive. But then we multiply this by negative x, it's going to flip it over the other side. So that's always going to be positive as well. Because, yeah, when we put in for this bit of sine x, which is negative, we're then multiplying it by a negative value of x, which will give it something positive. So, yeah, that is always positive. So at the moment, we're looking at just I1 or I1 and I4. Right, so it's going to have to be B is the answer. But let's just check that this. Oh, this is very similar to what we've just done. So if we were going to draw our cos graph minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So it's doing that. But then, yeah, then we're multiplying by a negative on the negative side, which will flip it over this way. Yeah, so it's going to change it. Yeah, so that's fine. So, yeah, we've got that. It's symmetrical. Otherwise, we're just putting that minus sign in. So, yeah, that's that's nice. It's come out of B. Just got to sort of talk things through a little bit. Another blank page. Question six. Which one of these functions can represent that graph right so we want to get asymptotes at minus three and one so well a could what does b have does b have what if you if you factorize that you're gonna get oh, that ain't gonna work no because if you put well i mean if you put one in there for a start you've got four minus two so it can't be b what about for c you'd have one plus two minus three yeah that would work or yeah okay c's got the right asymptotes we've got asymptotes at one so what have we got here yeah oh we've got too many of them here because you could have plus or minus one for d with that bit so that isn't going to work E doesn't have the one in it, right? So it's none of those because of the asymptotes. And now we've got how are we going to tell these ones apart? Let's look at uh, well, let's look at x is zero. You've got minus one a works, minus one plus two thirds, b works as well, All right? So we can't do that. Let's look at some other number then. What if we add? we had negative infinity, then A is going to go to negative and negative. So it can't be A because we're on the wrong side of this. So that wouldn't work. So it's going to have to be C. There must be something else. I bet something else is going to flip. What if we had minus one in some of these? We'd have negative if that was minus one, we'd have minus a half plus one. Yeah, so that doesn't work because for x is minus one, we've got one for a. So, yeah, it's going to have to be c. 
you just thought, yeah, just try things out on these. Try various values of, of X and things like that. Maybe you've got different ways of thinking about it. Maybe you'd even want to try and draw some of them when you're down to the last two. But the asymptotes is a quick win when you've got a question like that. All right, let's keep going. So far, so quick. An astronaut on the surface of the moon lightly tosses a ball of mass M upwards. What happens to the ball? Well, it's going to fall down to the ground. It's not going to enter orbit around the Earth, that's for sure. Eventually falls towards the Earth, burning up in the atmosphere when you lightly throw it up in the air. Falls to the surface of the moon. Well, yeah, funnily enough. Until it hovers in some kind of mystical way or it starts orbiting the moon. That is just a nuts question. It really is. Right. And they're just handing out marks there. Which of the following lists are the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum in order from shortest wavelength at the top to longest at the bottom? Right, it's not A because they've got X-ray and UV or the wrong way round. It's not B because they've got radio and infrared the wrong way round. C's wrong for the same. That's wrong. So it's got to be this. And yes, it's E. Right, another crazy question. I just handed out mark four marks for nothing there. What is the value of the current in the circuit below? So, all oh right, okay, so we just need to get the total resistance. So the total resistance in all of this is, well, we've got two thirds there plus one. So that's two thirds of R. That's one lot of R. We add those together. So we've got five over three R. And then we can say that I is V over R. So that's going to be three fifths V over R, which is B. All right, excellent. Capacitor is constructed with two conducting plates of equal area A separated by an insulator. Capacitance is C. Conducting plates are then shrunk to half their original area. What's the capacitance now? Well, capacitance is all about how much charge we can fit on the plates. So if you halve the area down, we're going to halve the amount of charge that you can store in them. So it's just going to drop down to C over 2. Right, OK, this is a, a run of strangely easy questions that they've put in here. It, it must kick in at some point to be really uh, difficult. Consider the pulley system below supporting an object with mass M. Assume acceleration due to gravity be G. Pulleys are massless, frictionless. String is massless and extensible. How much force F must the string be pulled down to keep the mass at the same height? Right, well, if we've got F there, we're going to have two lots of F there. So we've got MG here. So we just need to do MG over two for each F. Right, they're keeping the ridiculously easy questions going. Particle of charge Q, initial speed V is stopped with potential difference V in distance D time T. OK, right. So what is the initial momentum? So it's been stopped. So our force is our change in the momentum, which is MV, over the time, which is T. So that's our force. And what have we got? We've got a force that is going to be our q what we got we got charge we've got potential difference and we've got distance so we need all of these because this is going to be work done so our work done is so work done is force times distance so we do work done divided by distance our work done is q times v divided by the distance what we're we trying to work out initial momentum so our initial momentum, which is P, or MV equals P, which equals Q, V, T over D, which is A. OK, excellent. Uh, yeah, just in case, again, having always that that um, volts is joules per coulomb. So if we multiply volts by charge, then we end up with energy. That's what we're doing there, which is why we've got our work done here. Work done is the force times the distance and it's the change in the momentum divided by the time. So that's good. You must be getting towards the end of these. Right. So they've stopped doing the multiple choice questions. Maybe that's a good point to stop then if we've reached the end of multiple choice. So I'll leave that here then.
they were a very easy, I would say, set of multiple choice questions, particularly those ones in the second half. But that's the first 12. And then I'll come back with the hopefully more interesting ones in the next video.